Morning Prayer Rite 2 begins on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer. Those of you joining us online without prayer books can find a virtual prayer book on bcponline.org. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Standing or kneeling, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, but what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Oh, come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And now uh, we'll recite in unison the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover, on page 83 of the BCP. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also has come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The morning psalms appointed for today are Psalms 97 and 99 found on pages 726 and 20, 728 of the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, we'll lead them, read them responsibly by the whole verse. <clears throat> I'll give you a second here. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. <clears throat> the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. <clears throat> Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous, and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. And to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He 
He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One, Almighty King, lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One, Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You are a God who forgave them. You punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. <clears throat> A reading from Micah. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. <clears throat> Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I must bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he takes my side and executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light, I shall see his vindication. Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her who said to me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Now she will be trodden down like the mire of the streets. A day for the building of your walls. In that day, a boundary shall be far extended. <clears throat> In that day, they will come to you, from Assyria to Egypt, and from Egypt to the river, from sea to sea, from mountain to mountain. But he, but the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants, for the fruit of their doings. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Basam and Gilead as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, show us marvelous things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll recite uh, in unison uh, the canticle first song of Isaiah on page 86. Give you a minute there. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. and He will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And uh, please be seated for the second reading. A reading from John. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me that they may become completely one, so that the world may know 
that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and I know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second canticle today is the Song of the Redeemed. We'll recite this in unison, page 94, Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great Great deeds are they that you have done, done, surpassing human understanding. understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, O Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations draw near and fall down before you. Because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be in communion? We often speak about our partnerships with other faith traditions here in the Episcopal Church. We speak about our friendships and bonds with one another, and we speak of our bond with Christ our Lord. We often call these acts communion. But what does that mean? Well, I would say it means we are bonded in a certain special oneness with something. And as Christians, we often attribute that unique and spiritual bond we have with each other to the sacraments. That is our shared baptism and our shared communion in Christ. While one builds our identity as we are welcomed into the church, the other keeps us together in this identity. This is something we as Christians have shared for centuries going back to the earliest days of the church and to the disciples. We believe that Christ is revealed to us in the sacraments, and to that effect, there is almost a certain give and take. We open ourselves, our hearts, our minds to Christ, and he in turn gives on to us his blessing, his peace, and his grace. Just as the disciples in Scripture before us had their eyes opened to God the Son by the miracle of the Eucharist, so too are we able to better see him when we partake in these celebrations. This act of communion with Christ and with each other is the foundation that our identity as Christians is built upon. The two followers who were leaving Jerusalem for Emmaus encountered Christ risen on the road and were spiritually lost. They had had their whole worldview shattered three days earlier. For all they knew, if they were identified by the authorities, they could have suffered the same fate as Jesus. We all have probably felt similarly these past months. In a time of plague and sorrow, in lockdowns and quarantine, our worldview has been shattered. But we still have hope. We look to the future, we look to new possibilities. As these followers of Christ speak of the dark times of their day along the road, likely passing the hill of Calvary as they travel along. It is in the shadow of these dark places and times of dread that we encounter Christ along the road. As they did, and achieve, and as they did, they achieve communion with one another. As they walk with Christ, as they walk, Christ asks them about the day's events, and they relay the things that they saw. But Christ as always challenges his followers to think, to consider their learnings and their beliefs. They debate among themselves, and then he then relays his message to them and finally reveals himself, not only by scripture and prophecy, but also in the celebration of the Eucharist. And after these two break bread with the Lord and their eyes are open, they realize they must return to Jerusalem to again work and serve alongside Christ and his mission. In this act, these men are brought into oneness with the Lord, communion. 
As they open themselves to him and to each other on the road, so too does he reveal himself to them in this act. Christ is revealed to us in scripture and sacrament. And though our eyes may be closed to him in the dark times in our own lives, all it takes is conversation and examination to let the light that is the risen Christ back into our lives. Amen. Whoops, uh-oh. Uh. Got it. So the season of Eastertide begins with these seven days following Easter that are collectively known as Easter week. Today is Easter Wednesday. And in the Roman Catholic liturgy, as Ethan alluded, uh, the gospel reading for Easter Wednesday is Luke 24, 13 through 35, the story of the travelers on the road to Emmaus, which, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to briefly explore. Hopefully you recall the gist of the story, which goes as follows. Two weary followers of Christ, Cleopas and his unnamed buddy, are wending their way from Jerusalem to a place called Emmaus when they're joined by a third traveler seeking asking uh, what they're talking about. They sadly tell him about the events of the Passion that weekend. He responds with a brilliant explanation of the situation from the Old Testament prophets. Now, our two original travelers decided that they liked this guy, and although he had Im implied that his destination was further on down the road, they convince him to have dinner with them in Emmaus. He obliges them. But as soon as he utters the blessing and breaks bread, they suddenly recognize him as none other than Jesus himself, whereupon he promptly disappears. And they can hardly wait to get back to Jerusalem to tell the other Christians they're all about it. There are three aspects of this tale that I find very intriguing. The first is the lack of recognition of the resurrected Jesus, as also occurs, for example, in John 20:15 when Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb early in the morning and instead of initially recognizing Jesus, at first mistakes him for the gardener. And later in John 21.4, when the disciples fail to recognize him when they're out fishing on the lake of Tiberias. Why all this failure of recognition? Even though Jesus had predicted that he would rise again on the third day, as related in Mark 9.32, the disciples did not fully understand because clearly they weren't looking for him to be resurrected. Uh, that may have been an element in the Emmaus story, but one is left wondering how could these two disciples have walked, talked, and eaten with Jesus without recognizing him. Uh, in this instance, it seems that they were supernaturally prevented from recognizing Jesus. Jesus perhaps had taken on a different appearance to keep himself from being recognized. Why would Jesus have done this? The Bible does not say. Perhaps Jesus veiled his identity so the two disciples uh, could truly think through the things Jesus had been saying to them rather than being dazzled by his presence and accepting the teaching blindly. Second, why did Jesus disappear immediately after being recognized? In the case of Mary Magdalene at the tomb, Jesus explains that he can't stick around because he must yet ascend to heaven to be with the Father. In the Emmaus tale, his rapid exit may have been an encouragement to not waste any time getting back to Jerusalem with the breaking news. Third, just exactly where is Emmaus? Apparently, Emmaus was a reasonably common place name in the ancient Near East. And biblical archaeologists have identified a number of candidates for its location on the modern map. But in fact, nobody knows for sure where it was. I'd like to leave you with a suggestion that these three elements can perhaps be combined symbolically as follows. Many of us latter-day travelers through life find ourselves incapable of recognizing Jesus either because we're not expecting to see him alive 
or because he's disappeared after being sighted as we persist in our sleepwalk down a road to a place that's actually nowhere. Can this situation be changed? Let me know when you've had a chance to look inside. Amen. Now let us stand and recite together the Apostles' Creed, Creed on page 96. Oh no, as soon as I turn the page here. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator maker of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray standing or kneeling. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let me never be confounded. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us give thanks to God, silently or aloud, for all those specific blessings for which we are grateful today. Students of Capital University. For Mary. Let us pray silently aloud for all the persons whose needs are close to our hearts. Let us pray silently or aloud for the nations and the concerns of creation, the world, and the church all the victims of gun violence. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Now let us recite together the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, do give you most humble and hearty thanks for your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that we may truly be thankful hearts. We may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.